Okay, I think we're ready to go. You're good, Bob. Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome uh, committee members, uh, public and staff. Uh, this is our inaugural uh, Zoom uh, Committee of Adjustment meeting. Uh, just so um, if there's uh, folks listening in on the phone, uh, we have uh, with us uh, staff member Joanne Haley, uh, uh, clerk Kaylin McDonald, I believe our CEO Tim uh, Mills is on the line as well, along with uh, Mayor Frank Prevo, uh, Steph Councillor Stephanie Jaworski, Councillor Martin Lang, and Councillor Sam McTonnell, and myself, Deputy Mayor Warden. Uh, so uh, welcome to this meeting. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Are we, Kaylin, can you put the screen back to um, committee members while we go through the process? Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order at 6.06 .06 p.m. Can I get a mover and a seconder? Moved by Sam McDonnell, second by Frank Prevo, that the meeting is opened. All those in favor? Carried. Uh, you guys all have uh, the agenda. Um, can I get approval of the agenda as presented? Moved by Martin Lang, second by Sam McDonnell. All those in favor of the agenda as presented? Carried. Uh, I'll give us a couple minutes to review your minutes uh, from the last meeting and I'll ask if there's any questions. Are there any questions in regards to the minutes from the last meeting of uh, March 16th, 2020? Seeing none, may I get approval of the minutes from our last meeting? Moved by Sam, second by Martin Lang. All those in favor of the minutes as presented from the last meeting? Carried. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Seeing and hearing none. Uh, Ms. Haley, I'll hand the floor over to you in regards to A05-20 Lantier. Excellent. Uh, before we get started, Mr. Chair, I'm just going to read the required wording under the Ontario Planning Act. So this is a hearing under Section 44 of the Ontario Planning Act. Any person may participate in this hearing and or make written or verbal representation either in support of or in opposition to the proposed minor variance. If a person or public body does not make oral or written submissions at this hearing before the minor variance is decided upon, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the Committee of Adjustment to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal, which is also known as LPAT. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at this hearing or make written submissions to the Committee of Adjustment before the minor variance is decided upon, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the LPAT unless, in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to do so. So I'll get started uh, with the presentations. Um, did you want to do any formal introductions or anything, Mr. Chair, before we proceed or? I thought I already did. Okay. Was there, did I miss somebody? No, we will get started. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. And can everyone see my slide one? I can. I, I believe perfect. it's showing that you're it's asking if you want to leave the meeting. Or is that? Oh. Um, can everyone see my committee of adjustment slides show? Yep. Uh, Kaylin's on her way to see you, Joanne, in regards to that message. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't think I'm seeing the same thing that uh, the committee is seeing. Just bear with us for a second, please. Ms. Mm -hmm. Haley, are there members of the public that have joined this meeting that you're aware of? Yes, Kaylin there and, are. Okay. Okay, so it looks like we're having a little bit of a of an issue. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint presentation. There it's gone. No, it's back. No. <laughs> <laughs> um. I have a feeling you've got like two screens going that you've got like an extended screen. Because and you're not seeing my presentation at all. 
Yes, we, we are. can now, but there's a there's a screen in the middle that's asking you if you want to leave the meeting. Oh, and unfortunately, that's something that I cannot see. And so, if I were to proceed, it's blocking the um the the writing. Uh, only a small portion. I mean, if 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 you're okay, if you're going to read it word for word, I think yeah, uh, we okay. can proceed with this, and hopefully, it'll go away. Well, I apologize to everyone in the public for, for this error. So um, welcome everyone. And for the members of the public that are participating by Zoom or by phone, you'll be permitted to speak to, um, to your application or the respective application following my presentation. And prior to speaking, I will ask you to state your name and your address for the record. So I'm going to begin with application A0520. Do you see that screen now? No. Okay. I'm just going to So how about the weather today? <laughs> Very nice, actually. It was a great day. And it's only going to get better throughout the week. <clears throat> we'll take it. Yes. Going to try again sharing my screen. How's that looking? Not yet. Joanne, do you have two screens going? No. I think we need to uh, use some of the modernization funding. <laughs> I was going to suggest you disconnect the second monitor. Yeah, no, I definitely don't have two screens going. Okay. Maybe I do have two screens going. Look at this. There it is, but it's asking if you want to sign in. Just hit the X. There you go. As soon as I hit cancel, okay, I'm going to try. Are you able to minimize that then, Joanne? Yes. There. I got this. See. Yep. How is that if I do that? This, this view is just fine. I would think the committee would agree. Yep. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Okay, so we're getting started again. I'm sorry, everyone, for the inconvenience. So I'll just repeat for members of the public that are participating either by a telephone or through Zoom, you will be permitted to speak to your presentation to your application following my presentation. And prior to speaking, we'll ask you to state your name and address for the record. So we're going to begin with application A0520. This property is located in part of lot three, 
uh, part of plan 51, lots one and two in the geographic township, excuse me, of Lancaster, now in the township of South Langary, also known as 6423 Karen View Road in South Lancaster. This is an image of the subject property over to the right is uh, the Lancaster Wharf. And um, the purpose of the minor variance application is the applicant proposes to construct a detached residential garage and therefore requests the following relief from our zoning bylaw. Um, the application is, is requesting to increase the maximum gross floor area from 100 square meters to 168.7 square meters to construct a residential garage with a mezzanine. And I'm going to explain this a little further. So this is an image of the garage. So our committee of adjustment members have the benefit of looking at the site plan that was provided for the uh, proposed new garage um, just to the north of the proposed uh, dwelling, new dwelling, I should say. And I've provided a definition of what gross floor area means out of our zoning bylaw. So the gross floor area is the total area of all floors above grade measured between the outside surfaces of exterior walls or between the outside surfaces of exterior walls and the center line of firewalls, except that in any other occupancy than a residential occupancy where an access or building service penetrates a firewall, the measurements shall not be taken to the center line of such firewall. So the main point to this is that it includes all floors above grade. So now I wanna break down the uh, proposed construction. So the proposed area of the main floor of the garage is 135.3 square meters with a mezzanine on the upper floor of 33.5 square meters. Therefore, the total gross floor area is 168.7 square meters. So this is just a reminder, this is not footprint. The property is designated residential district and is located in the urban settlement area of the county official plan. And it does conform to the general intent of the official plan. And the property is owned residential two and floodplain holding. The floodplain portion of the property is adjacent to the water and is not anywhere near the proposed uh, garage or dwelling for that matter. And the application does conform to the general intent of the zoning bylaw. Uh, this application was circulated to applicable municipal staff, as well as the uh, RRCA, so the Raisin Region Conservation Authority. The Raisin Region Conservation Authority has no concerns uh, with the proposed garage. However, they will require an Ontario regulation permit to be issued by their office prior to construction. During the circulation, we received uh, one email inquiry in regards to the footprint of the, of the proposed garage. I did uh, communicate with that individual and provided to them a copy of the plans and I received no further comments. And as of this evening, I've received no formal or written comments in general for this application uh, to date. So if there's any questions, this is an opportunity where members of the um, public will be uh, allowed to speak and our chair, Mr. Warden, will uh, coordinate um, any of the questions that come in as well as our clerk, uh, Kayla McDonald. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Haley. Uh, Joanne, I would like to just uh, verify that this was a previous application that we deferred as there was a minor uh, mistake that was caught. Is that correct? That is correct, Mr. Chair. And the reason for that is, is the applicant filed their application with the number of the main floor only, not including the mezzanine. And because drawings were submitted, we were able to go back to the applicant to confirm they actually wanted the mezzanine to be part of the application. If it would have been approved previously based on the main floor only, we would not have been able to issue a permit. So they did revise the application and sent in the uh, required information, which allowed me to recirculate. Okay, perfect, thank you. Are there any uh, questions of the committee members? Uh, as Ms. Jaworski? Thank you, through Mr. Chair. Um, Ms. Haley, um, point of clarification on the mezzanine. Is it, uh, is it a mezzanine or is it an apartment? No, it's it's considered to be uh, a mezzanine based on the um, the drawings only. I'm, it, no living space is proposed to my knowledge. Would that but make it? Would that make a difference? Um, it would not make a difference for the purpose of the application because tonight we are considering the increased size of the gross floor area only. But let me answer your question a little bit further. If this individual wanted to proceed with um, maybe creating the upper unit or the mezzanine as an, as an upper residential unit, they would be permitted to do so with our secondary unit bylaw. Um, as I think council and, and the committee is aware that we allow for additional residences 
on um, existing properties with a main primary main dwelling. But that's not the intent um, to my knowledge so far. Thank you. Okay, I, I can't see Councillor McDonnell. So um, uh, Sam, are, do you have any questions on this, uh, on this one? No, no questions here. Okay, thank you. Are there any members of the public that have questions? I'm hoping Kaylin will be able to uh, put them in if, if, uh, if this is the case. Uh, Ms. Haley, uh, in the attendees, was there anyone who had called to speak on this file? No, nobody. I believe the only person you heard from was the applicant. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, just to verify, if there are members of the public that wish to uh, uh, speak to this matter, they do they have any time after this meeting or, or does it have to be done this evening? No, it has to be done this evening, Mr. Chair. Okay. And the reason that is, is because the committee makes the decision um, tonight, unless you were to choose to defer it again. I mean, that's not our recommendation. So this no, is your no. opportunity to speak. Okay. Um, so I'm assuming that um, that no member of the public uh, is wanting to speak further on this matter, uh, only being uh, with what Ms. Haley said was there was one question uh, inquired about, and I believe the question was answered. So that being said, may I get a a mover and a seconder to approve this application as presented. Moved by Sam, second by Martin Lang. All those in favor of the application as presented? I can't see Frank, are you uh, yay? We have quorum. Yes, I'm yay, yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, Miss Haley, 0620, Whitcamp. Okay, hey, so, um... This application is uh, a property located at part of lot E, concession one front in the geographic township of Charlottenburg, now in South Hungary, also known as 6618 Tree Haven Road. Uh, the attached image shows uh, the location of the existing property. Don't be concerned if the lot lines don't add up. It's simply because we overlay aerial imagery, oh, imagery over the um, Municipal Property Assessment Corporation uh, uh, data. So um, as you can see, this, uh, this property is located at the end of the cul-de-sac on Tree Haven. Um, this is a unique application because we're dealing with some existing uh, structure components. So I'll just try and explain this very clearly, that the applicant proposes to construct a foyer, a sunroom, and a deck that will be attached to the existing single detached dwelling, as well as to recognize an existing two-story deck that was built without approvals. And for again, for the committee members who are looking at the, um, the site plan before you, you'll see that a foyer already exists. So they're looking at removing that and replacing it with a new one. And uh, then it'll, the plan will also show the uh, proposed deck. And I'll, I'll show that on my screen in a minute as well. It's just very difficult to see. So the purpose of the minor variance application is to reduce the water course setback from 30 meters to 23.1 meters to the proposed reconstructed foyer from 30 meters to 15.3 meters to the southwest corner and 19.5 meters to the existing northwest corner of the existing two-story deck. And from 30 meters to 26.3 meters to the southwest corner and to 29 meters to the northwest corner of the proposed deck. I'm now going to show um, the site plan. And can you see my mouse when I scroll over? Yes. Yep. So where my mouse currently, currently is, is the existing foyer that will be removed and reconstructed. The highlighted area shows the setback to um, the canal. This is an existing two-story deck. Unfortunately, there's no records with our office or with the Conservation Authority Office of Permit. And so um, you'll see later on in the slide how we propose to deal with that. But the, this structure also does not meet the 30 uh, meter setback. So hence the variance from this location and this location. Then in this area is the proposed deck that would wrap around um, the side of the house. And you'll see from here to here, as well as from here to here, it doesn't meet the 30 meter setback. The committee will, re will remember me saying often when we're reducing um, setbacks from 30 meters to 50 meters, it is something that staff can support, providing they've demonstrated the applicable information in terms of um, uh, topographical surveys, um, impacts to the floodplain. 
But when it goes beyond 15 meters, so closer than 15 meters to the water course, it's something that we can't support simply how the bylaw is written. And we're also following provincial policy. So in terms of the designation of the property, it's currently designated residential district, which conforms to the general intent of the official plan. It is currently zoned a state residential and floodplain holding. The floodplain portion is adjacent to the water only, not where the proposed um, construction is, is going to be. And it also conforms to the general intent of the bylaw. The application was circulated to the Raisin Region Conservation Authority and their comments are as follows. The reconstructed foyer, they have no concerns. The proposed deck, they have no concerns. The existing two-story deck at the rear of the house is believed to be constructed without a permit from their office also. The RCA may have issues with this structure. Um, however, further information may be required. And a permit from the Conservation Authority is required for all of the work above. And the applicant is currently aware of that. So to date, I've received no formal or oral, formal oral or written comments from the public. Um, planning and building have no concerns with the proposed minor variances simply because of the proposed setbacks. And in working with the Conservation Authority, we've agreed that we would assist the property owner to obtain the additional information required to address the existing two-story deck. Um, there's a lot of unknowns, but we believe we can probably come to a, a conclusion or a solution that would allow the deck to remain. Worst case scenario, if compliance cannot be obtained uh, from the RCA, then we may be dealing with the applicant um, to remove the deck, but we are recommending the committee to approve it this evening um, because we do believe that there will be a solution. However, if you have any concerns, we can, I'll do my best to answer those questions. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Haley. Uh, are there any questions of the committee members? Uh, Councillor Jaworski. Thank you through you, Mr. Chair. Um, Ms. Haley, I have a question and maybe it has to do with that we haven't had one of these meetings for a little while and maybe I'm out of practice, but I'm, I'm a little um, confused as that we, we can move forward without having the, the issue of the existing deck sorted out and having the RRCA's input on that specific one, that specific piece. Because in my, it, right now you're looking at reviewing the requested reduced setback for something that's existing. This committee is not involved in determining if the structure can remain or not from either a building uh, code perspective or from um, a geotechnical engineering perspective. If you've had a chance to look at the uh, conservation authorities requirements, you'll notice they, they're looking for some additional confirmation in regards to um, topo elevations, um, confirmation from um, the, the water's edge versus top of bank, which I've been able to clarify, uh, by the way, with the surveyor. And um, they also uh, reference the possibility of a geotechnical study. So let's say the committee chooses to approve it this evening. The next step in the process would be to provide the additional information to satisfy um, the RCA in, in terms of the, the location of the structure and the quality of the structure based on, based on their role of um, issuing permits and, and impacts to flood hazards, flood, uh, flood zones and fish habitat. And then from the township's perspective, they would need to meet the requirements of the building code. So even if the setbacks happen to be approved this evening, which is why we're recommending it, doesn't mean that we are going to make that deck legal and guarantee that it's going to be able to remain on the property. But we'll do the best we can to work with the people because we've been, we know it's been there some, for some time and we just don't know when it was built. So it's, so, it's as though we're, sorry, if you don't mind just, so it's as though we're, it's as though the deck's not there. It's as though someone's proposing a deck and they want it at this distance. That's right. Okay. And that's, that's a good way to put it. Okay. And supplemental. So in terms of, you know, floodplain, all these structures, just to clarify, you said all of the structures, both proposed and existing, they're not in the, the hundred year floodplain? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to make the comment that this is so the these uh, folks don't have to come back a second time 
and apply for a second minor variance should the uh, structure be allowed to stay, correct, Ms. Haley? That's an excellent way to put it, Mr. Chair, for sure. And, and when we find when we find properties or, or we find issues on properties that may have been um, created previously by previous owners, we work with the people to try and rectify the situations as best they can so that they don't run into issues in the future if they sell and, it, and those questions are raised by a buyer and they lose out on a sale. So it hasn't, in the past, it, it's been fairly common where you'll see that we're trying to um, include an existing situation in a variance to help the property come into full compliance. Perfect, that's, that's great. Uh, having, having no outstanding work orders is wonderful. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, are there any other questions of the committee members? I can't see anyone's hands up. Do we have any comments uh, or questions from the public? Joanne, was there anyone in particular who contacted you on this file? The only uh, person that I believe that contacted the municipal office was the applicant, uh, Mr. Inchowney. I believe you spoke with him this afternoon. Yeah, I can. Uh... Would anyone like to ask him a question? He is on uh, meeting. Okay, perfect. So um, thank you very much. Uh, so I am going to ask for um, a mover and a seconder for the approval of this application as presented. Moved by Sam Actonell, second by Martin Lang, that this application be approved as presented. All those in favor? The motion is carried. Thank you very much. Moving on to 07-20, MacDonald. Okay, hey, thank you, Mr. Chair. So this property is located at part of lots uh, nine to 11, concession eight, also known as Cuthbert Road. Um, it's in the geographic township of Charlottenburg, uh, now in South Glengarry. The original property was over 200 acres in size. It's a very large farm parcel. It recently uh, received provisionally approved severance subject to conditions. And one of the conditions on the subject property was the requirement of a minor variance to reduce the minimum lot frontage of the severed parcel as it could not comply with the zoning bylaw. I'm going to try and explain this further by showing you the maps. So this is the original um, uh, parcel. And then in this map, this shows you the severed and the retained. So the retained is the blue area. And we're not discussing that this evening, but the severed portion is the pink area. When you look at Cuthbert Road, Cuthbert Road is um, a dead end road. It then turns into a portion of an unopened municipal road allowance. In order to meet the zoning bylaw, you would need to have 40 meters of frontage for both the severed and retained. So for both the blue parcel and the pink parcel. 40 meters of frontage works out to be 132 feet. When we come across parcels like this, where um, they're, they're, they're in a little bit of, an, of a different or a difficult situation where the road is only so long and they can't meet those requirements, um, there's really no reason to force an individual to extend the municipal road because no further development is going to occur, especially in the area of blue one of the other conditions for this severance is that it has to be rezoned uh, to prohibit residential construction. And we do that through an agreement. So there'll be no further development in that location. Also, when you look at um, the area in pink, there is going to be sufficient road frontage, even though it looks quite small here, sufficient road frontage that's, that's still going to allow access. So the purpose of the minor variance to meet the bylaw is to reduce that minimum lot frontage from 40 meters um, to 28 meters on a parcel of property that re recently received the uh, severance approval. So if this is approved this evening, what will happen is, is we'll clear that condition with the United Counties and it would allow the, um, the severance uh, to be completed and it would allow then the applicant or the farmer to um, to sell uh, the retained land. And just to put it into perspective, because I went from metric to feet here, again, the 40 meters equates to 132 feet, the 28 meters equates to 92 feet. So when you think of 92 feet of frontage, it's still sufficient to allow for large uh, farm vehicles, as well as um, vehicular uh, access.
Could I just point of information, Joanne? Could you go back to the map and just show me again? Your it's all it's the frontage on Cuthbert Road, right? There's yes. Road. So see that pink portion? Yeah. And, and I, I I believe I just said something incorrectly. I said the retained portion is is required to prohibit residential construction. Actually, that's not the case because the parcels are very large. So they they meet the bylaw, and that's not required by the by the province because of the the size and in the rural district. So I apologize for that. But we're dealing with that reduced frontage on that pink portion only. And, and that's the only access to the property? Uh, well, the, there, the access continues to allow access on the blue portion, which has um, a home, uh, farm buildings, and, um, and a pool. Thank you. So just moving on then, um, the property is designated rural district and conforms to the general intent of the official plan. And it was certainly permitted to uh, to be severed, and the property is zoned rural, and the proposed variance conforms to the general intent of the zoning bylaw. And um, to date, I've received no formal oral or written comments, and we have no concerns with the proposed minor variance. And in fact, we recommended that the severance be approved, and it was approved subject to this condition. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Haley. Are there any other questions of the committee? Uh, seeing none, uh, can I get a um, mover and a seconder uh, to approve as presented? Moved by Frank, second by Sam. All those in favor of the application as presented? Carried. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to A09-20, McLeod. Uh, seems as though there'll be two presentations in one, Miss Haley. Yes, thank you. So the reason why I've decided to do two presentations in one is because uh, there's two parcels of property that are of identical size, identical shape. Um, one is developed and one isn't. And I understand there's a buyer looking to buy both parcels um, that may or may not combine the parcels someday. But because the buyer is looking to be able to have two horses on, this, on the properties, they would like the ability to have those horses to be able to be uh, roaming from one uh, property to the other and not simply contain them on one. So I hope this isn't confusing for the members of the public or for uh, the committee. So I'll do my best to explain this very clearly. So A09 is located on part of lot 21 concession nine. It's also known as 21224 concession 10. The reason why this property has a civic number is because it's the developed property. A10, A10-20 is for the property directly um, beside it to the west. It's part of lot 21 concession nine as well. And it does not have a civic number because it's a vacant parcel. I'm going to show you the image of A09 in this location here and A010 right here. And you'll notice that they are side by side, identical size, identical shape lots. The purpose of the variance is to permit an agricultural use on an existing lot that is 4.43 hectares in size for each property. So I'm going to explain this a little further. Currently, if you're located in the agricultural resource zone, in order to have an agricultural use, which includes livestock, you're required to have 20 hectares. In this case, and, and 20 hectares equals approximately 50 acres, and the 4.43 hectares that are um, that can currently be that currently can be provided for both existing lots is actually 10.95 acres in size. On here, I, I included the definition of agricultural uses. I'm not going to read the entire thing, but why I did that is to help people understand what's an agricultural use. So it means the growing of crops, including nursery and horticultural crops, crops, raising of livestock, other animals for food. And then it goes on to list um, like agroforestry, maple syrup production, but it makes sure it does not include things like manufacturing or abattoirs or tanneries or cheese factories because that's very much a commercial a component to agriculture. So the property is designated agri agricultural resource and conforms to the general intent of the official plan and the property is zoned agricultural and the proposed minor variance conforms to the general intent of the bylaw. So why I say that is because when we um, look at the lot sizes 
and we hear that there's going to be proposed livestock. And when you're um, in an area where you have a septic system and a well, right away you want to be you want to ensure that there's going to be adequate um, area or acreage to be able to accommodate um, the horses. And when you have a property in 10.95 acres in size, well, in my opinion, that can certainly accommodate um, a couple of horses quite easily without negatively impacting um, the well on the property or um, worried about um, insufficient space for the horse's well-being. But why I say an agricultural use is because we don't limit the number of animals. You're either allowed to have the use or you're not allowed to have the use, which is why we're always concerned about the lot size. And again, in, in our opinion, when this was reviewed, there was no concern with the lot size simply because it's almost 11 acres each parcel. So to date, we've received no formal comments. Um, I have received a couple of phone calls regarding the application and uh, asking some questions in regards to um, the type of, of use and the type of animals. And as I mentioned, we have no concern with the proposed minor variants. And just to be very clear, regardless what the decision is this evening, there'll be two separate decisions issued based on A9 and A10 of, um, of the applications. I am aware that um, I believe there's a couple people that have registered per to participate in this portion of the hearing. So Mr. Chair, um, there may be people who wish to speak. Uh, thank you, Ms. Haley. I thought I had received an email, uh, yeah. but I've had a lot of them in the last couple of days. Yes, I believe um, you did, Mr. He did receive an email today. I forwarded it to you. Yes, I apologize. Okay, thank you. That's okay. So there, that's yeah, not, on the line. yeah, there we, yeah. Okay, good. And I'll document that in the record as well. Yeah, thank you. It's from, uh, I believe it's uh, Jay Montpetit, yeah, is she, the yes. Julie. Yeah, She's on I just the line wanted to... to ask her if she'd like to speak or did you want to wait? Okay, I'm going to follow up with uh, community members first and then I'll ask the public. I see Councillor McDonnell has his hand up. Uh, go ahead, Councillor McDonnell. Uh, yes, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess more or less, Joanne, the, the plan for this property is the gentleman's looking to buy both parcels. They're currently two separate parcels and he doesn't want them to merge together on the sale, correct? You'd like so, the opportunity to maybe sell one or the other in the future? So based on my research, and, and, and I, I'll explain this to committee, my, my research can be very, is fairly limited. So according to what I can see from our office is these two parcels were created by a severance previously. And there's a rule of thumb called once a severance, always a severance. So once an, a property receives what's called Planning Act consent, which is a severance, then they cannot be merged. The only way to merge the parcels is if you were to apply for another severance to do a lot addition. If they happen to have been created, let's say outside of Planning Act consent, many years ago, when you think of the original cadastral system, two farm parcels side by side, which you often see, especially for those of you who are farmers who own large parcels, and you put the, the names of the, so you've put the property in the same name side by side, they would automatically merge. These properties have two separate pins, two separate- um, um, Our just, plan numbers? Yes, and one of them does, and therefore they're legally transferable lots. The only way to 100% verify with what I'm saying is if a full title search is completed at the registry office. And we don't do that, and that, that's simply because I don't need to do that. Okay, okay thank so, you, Ms. Taylor. Uh, Did you have a subsequent, Sam? Just a subsequent, so, so essentially, if we do, I believe, go through with this minor variance and change the zoning, does that not mean they will merge on a sale? No, so that's a really good question. So first of all, if the committee happens to choose to um, approve the applications this evening, there is going to be a decision for each application. It'll never be able to force or trigger a merger because that's a registry act, that's a registry act movement or, or a re requirement. We don't have any control over that. So what would happen at the end of the day is, is there would be a decision in each property file that would say each parcel of property is permitted to have an agricultural use on an undersized lot. Okay. And if the applicant chooses to keep them separate, then they can have their, their horses the way it stays today. If the applicant chooses down the road to merge the properties, then the decisions will still be valid because the property will now be combined. 
Okay. okay. Just, uh, I guess, just to, I'll close with a, or close my questions with a comment and just say I, I don't see any issue in having somebody with a, a few horses on 20 acres. Uh, I know there's a lot of places around the municipality where there's less land and more horses, but I, I, I know the property well and I can't see any issues. Hey, thank you. Uh, just Joanne, could you clarify a comment? Uh, Councillor McDonnell said, uh, we're not doing a zoning change here. We're just doing a minor variance to permit animals on an agriculturally undersized lot, correct? Per that's exactly right, yes. And are we, uh, is there a limit to, are you setting a limit on that? Are uh, like uh, so many animals or, or, or uh, what, what, what I'm asking, are we setting a limit like two horses, four horses? So the, the answer to that is no, but the okay. answer, but you could do that. And I'm going to explain why. So the reason why the answer is no is currently the bylaw doesn't regulate the number of animals on any property. You're either permitted to have an agricultural use or you're not. Um, many municipalities choose not to regulate the animals because now you have to enforce the number of animals. Mm -hmm. Those animals could reproduce. So then all of a sudden you could be in non-compliance for a period of time or you for a long period of time, depending on how you choose to to uh, how long you choose to look after um, the Okay, that was just a general question. I, oh, no. I'm not in favor of putting a cap on it okay. because I don't want to start uh, having to police uh, mm -hmm. these applications. Uh, it is a zone agricultural or how, yeah. however you stated and we're going to give them relief from the lot size. Are there any other questions of committee uh, members? Um, uh, Councillor Jorsky? Thank you. For you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I'll, I'll start with a comment. I mean, I have I have a larger property, but my horses are confined to an area that's less than 10 acres. And so I think I, I, I'm familiar with that size of lot with horses and I don't think there's an issue. <laughs> but um, what I did want to double check though, is so we don't limit the amount of animals, but I mean, and I've never had a very large number of animals, so I'm not sure, but my understanding is at some point there are other regulations that, that start to be triggered in terms of how many animals you can have on properties that, and I, I, may, I might be wrong, but it's like more AMAFRA type uh, regulations. Maybe those who are- Nutrient more... Management Act? Yeah, that's what I meant, thank you. So through you, Mr. Chair, um, um, Councillor Jaworski is on the right track where if, if this property, uh, let's say the applicant chose down the road to, to build a, a small barn to accommodate their horses, then um, it would be reviewed to determine if a nutrient management strategy or nutrient management plan is required. They would also have to uh, do a minimum distance separation uh, calculation. But these requirements of AMAFRA are triggered at the building uh, permit stage or the lot creation stage. So at this point, if someone's looking to have a few horses to graze on the property, maybe build a, a small little lean to or shelter that doesn't trigger a building permit, then we don't regulate the number of um, animals or the number of nutrient units. However, if those animals are ever at the point where they're, they're not cared for and um, there, there's a concern for the well-being of the animals, then we would have the ministry or, or the OSPCA become involved to address that situation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I believe we have a member of the public who would like to speak on the matter. So, Ms. Mumpty, I'm going to give you an opportunity to speak now. So, I do. Ms. Mumpty. Oh, hello. Hi. Um, I'm going to try my best to talk because I have a problem with my voice. Okay. Can you uh, can you hear me? Yes, Ms. Mombati. Uh, can you state your address? Um, my address is 21423 Concession 10. 21423 Concession 10? Yes, it is. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Um, our biggest concern is um, that property, um, there was supposed to be bought by somebody that wanted to make a refuge. We already have a refuge in this concession, and our biggest concern is that it this this person that wants to buy is associated to the ones that wanted to make a refuge before. 
second of all, um, most of that land is wooded. Um, I don't see horses in a in a in 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 that place. But hey, I'm no horse. Uh, I never had horses. We we used to have a dairy farm, and I know there's restrictions about uh, acres and that. And I'm pretty sure it goes for horses too. Um, I'm just afraid that. Um, you're saying that there is no barn. There is a barn. And is it going to be filled? What will they do with the manure? That's our biggest concern. Is it going to go out of control like the refuge that we already have on this concession? Okay. Uh, thank um, you very, very much. Are there any questions? Yep, Kaylin. Uh, Jamie McDonald is on uh, and he would like to speak. Maybe. Okay, I was just going to, before Jamie comes on, um, are there any questions of the committee members uh, to uh, Mrs. Mopati? Okay, seeing none. Thank you very much, Ms. Mopati, for your, for your feedback. Um, and uh, you can stay uh, part of the, the meeting. And I'll invite Mr. Mac McDonald uh, to come on. Welcome, Mr. McDonald. Uh, hello, Mr. Hello, Mr. Play nice. You're, you're in the south. Yes, yes, I am. Yep. <laughs> uh, my name is Jamie McDonald. I am. I live at 252 Hope Street in Alexandria, and I am the agent for the seller. Uh, just a couple comments in regards to uh, Miss Montpetit. Uh, the buyer is from the other side of Ingleside, so I don't think that there is any connection to uh, the people that have that other refuge that I'm, I'm not aware of. Uh, also, the uh, proponent, it's uh, horses for the daughter uh, at this point and for her to ride. Uh, there's, uh, uh, they plan on keeping the whole 20 acres, 22 acres. They thought that that was all one parcel when they were purchasing at the beginning. Uh, so uh, I don't think that uh, there's, I don't think they're coming in to bring in 30 horses and uh, that kind of stuff. They're just there for their daughter to, uh, to ride. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. McDonald. Are there any questions of the committee members to Mr. McDonald? We're, we're, we're going to let him off that easy. I just want okay. to say, uh, Mr. Lang, uh, nice do up there. Looks good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for your uh, your comments, Mr. McDonald. Uh, Kaylin? Uh, Ms. Montpetit would like to say something again. Okay, yeah. the chance if uh, oh, Mr. there you are miss miss Mobati, would you mind starting over we uh, we didn't catch anything that you just said okay wouldn't this be a conflict of interest if mr mcdonald is uh mayor of uh, north glengarry and he is selling the property wouldn't that be a conflict of interest well, uh, I can answer that, uh, Ms. Momati. Mr. Uh, Mr. McDonald is the mayor of North Glengarry. Uh, this is uh, part of South Glengarry. Uh, on the other side of the road, he would have to declare a conflict of interest and would not be able to participate. But in this uh, role, he's acting as the, uh, the buyer's uh, real estate agent, and I don't see a conflict of interest. All right. Thank you very much. Is there any other okay. questions? Well, I might just check. We have one person on the phone. Just to see yep. Like to yep. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Segain, did, did you Hello? wish to speak to this application? Yep. Go ahead. Yes. Hello, Ms. Segain. How are you? I'm fine. You? Good. Would you mind stating your address for us, please? 21266 Concession 10. 21266 Concession 10, is that correct? Yes, I'm a Ryan McLeod's neighbor. Okay. And I, I'm, li I'm uh, like Julie's concern. Um, if it's two horses, it's okay, but 
I'm, we were so we had so bad experience with the uh, shelter we have we already have on the ten concession and I worry so much about that uh, and they cut all the trees and everything and there there was no fence and the the horses and the cows were always on, at a workplace in my garden and my flowers that's my big concern okay thank you thank you thank you very much uh, uh, mrs Sege. Uh, are there any comments uh, of the committee members or any questions to Mrs. Sege? Uh, seeing none. Um, personally, um, I will go and say that it's unfortunate that uh, you, you both have experienced uh, bad luck with your, uh, in your characterization, ne neglectful neighbor. Um, however, um, I think responsible people who have large animals uh, who are going to take the time to apply for these applications and go by by the rules to to get a variance to permit it? I, it's, it seems to me that they're going to be responsible in 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 uh, caring for those animals. So, um, seeing none, uh, seeing no other comments, um, can I get a mover on this uh, application? Okay, moved by Sam, second by. Martin Lang to approve application A09-20 and A10-20 uh, as presented. All those in favor? The motion has been carried. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to uh, item number 10, uh, potentially a next meeting, Ms. Haley. Uh, so at this point, I have no applications to process. I do expect um, at least two to come in. I cannot promise you they're going to come in in time for June 1st. If not, we'll be aiming for the June 15th uh, meeting then. Oh, okay. Perfect. Uh, Kaylin, I just seen your text message to me. And that, is that an old comment <laughs> in regards to Mr. McDonald? I'm, I'm thinking so. Okay, perfect. Uh, so that being said, uh, move for adjournment. Mover and a seconder. Moved by Sam, second by Frank to adjourn the meeting at 6.58, just under the wire. I'd like to thank uh, uh, council member staff uh, for participating in this inaugural committee of adjustment meeting and uh,